Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss and today I'm going to try a Prismacolor product that I have never tried before. What do you think, Steve? Awesome. <laughs> so if you've been around Coloring Bliss at all, you know that I am a Prismacolor girl. I love my Prismacolor Premier Color Pencils. They are so creamy and fun to color with. I have Prismacolor markers. I have a lot of Prismacolor products, but there is one Prismacolor product that I have never colored with. And it's kind of shocking to me that I have never tried them and colored with them. So that ends today. We're going to color with them, unbox them, swatch them, experiment with them, and play with them together today in this video. The Prismacolor Premier New Pastels. It's a pastel. So I do have a little experience with pastels. So I can pass on what experience I have. Not a lot, but a little. So it should be fun to see how that experience translates into these. What are they? Are they great? Are they eh? Let's find out together. <laughs> Let's unbox and do some swatching. Just wait, Jennifer, before you get started, I need to tell them about our giveaway because you only have a little bit of time left to enter for your chance to win this, this giant set of 120 Pablo pencils by the mighty Karen Dash. I'll talk to you more about it at the end of this video, but I wanted to make sure you know that the giveaway ends on June 8th, 2021. So don't miss out on your chance to win this set. Good luck, everyone. Okay, so this is the box here. I bought the 24 set. The new pastels, they come in a variety of packages. You can get them in 12, 24, 36, 48, 96, and open stock, which means a single pastel stick at a time. And right now, as of May 2021, the best prices I could find were on dickblick.com, which I thought was kind of cool. That's as far as US prices. This set right here is selling for $25.90 cents on dickblick.com which is roughly a dollar per stick which is pretty cool I think for an art supply so they are considered a firm pastel color stick and these are like a chalk pastel or in the world of pastels they're called soft pastels but there are more on the firm side of these soft chalk pastels and on the back it says that they are rich creamy texture for easy blending and shading stronger than traditional soft pastels so they will have less breakage I do have some softer pastels that will pull out and I'll sort of show you the difference so we can kind of get a feel together what I'm talking about. It says that they're ideal for illustration, that the sticks can be sharpened for precise line work. Here it tells you the size of them. If you're curious, they're three and five eighths inch long and a quarter inch square. They come in 96 colors. These are the colors right here that are in this set. And I checked to see if maybe they were in some sort of Prismacolor color family. But as far as I can tell, no, they don't match the colors in my Prismacolor Premier color pencil. So that's a little dis... I wish they matched, but they don't, and that's okay. So um, usage tips, it says that we can use them with a brush and dip our brush in water and then touch the pastel and use it like a paint. So we're going to try that. We can also crush up the pastel and mix it in with our matte mediums to make an acrylic effect. So I thought we better try that as well. So there's lots we can try here. Let's unbox this and see what what we have inside. Okay, let's see what we have inside. There, I'll put this like this and lift it up. There they are. Ooh, they're all in their nice individual little foam coffins. And it looks like you can, um, nope, you can't lift it out. It's so you have to keep them in this box if you want to use their little foam um, slots here. But look at all those pretty colors. And each stick, it appears here, I think this yellow one will show up well on screen. Each stick has a stamp on it where the number of the color is pressed into the stamp, I mean into the stick. 
That's really cool so that we know the color name. So this one is 243 and then P for pastel. Oh, I'm really excited to swatch these and that's the next thing I want to do. So let's talk health and safety really quick. When it comes to soft chalk pastels, they can create some dust and some, um, yeah, dust. Either dust on your actual artwork or in the air. And anytime you're working with an art supply that creates particles that go up into the air, you need to be careful, whether it's a spray or a product like this. So if um, you are sensitive to particles in the air, make sure you wear a mask. Um, with pastels in particular, you don't want to blow the dust because some of the ingredients in our art supplies are not healthy for us to breathe into our lungs. So you want to be really careful with that um, as a person. And then if you're doing art around children or people who have lung problems or pets, just be careful of that, okay? So I'm going to actually put on an apron and I'm going to, I'm not gonna wear a mask because I'm okay, but I'm gonna grab my um, trash can and have it handy so that any dust I can collect and tap off into the trash can rather than blow blowing it or um, swishing it around, okay? I also have a little vacuum that I use. This is Bessie, my little desk vacuum that I can use to vacuum up some of the dust particles and then empty it into my trash. So that's your health and safety warning. Just be adult about your art supplies and take good care of them and you'll be able to take good care of your health as well. Okay, so let's swatch. I'm going to be swatching on both white and black because I want to see how it looks on both types of paper because I plan to use pastels in both situations. So for my swatching, I have two swatch books ready. I have a Swatch Bliss Volume 1 where I can swatch onto black paper. You've seen I did a previous video where I did all kinds of swatching on black paper and so I'm going to add to that of the back here. I'll be doing some more of swatching into this book and I'll put all of them on here. And then I also have a Swatch Bliss Volume 2 here, which has some color pencil paper in here, which is a bit of a different texture of paper, a little bit more gritty texture. So I'll be able to see what the pastels do on this type of paper so we can see both situations, black, white, different textures, how will these pastels perform? So I will cue the beautiful montage of swatching for you to enjoy.
you're seeing the swatches right before I tap off all of the crumbs. So there's some crumbs for sure, and that's normal for pastels, but not an excessive amount, so that's nice. All right, the swatching, well, primary swatching is done, and I did a dry swatch for each color and a wet swatch for each color, both on the white and on the black. So um, when you swatch or use color with or design and draw with pastels, there is something we need to talk about, and that is how to affix or seal down this powdery substance. It is very powdery very um, what's the word it's not a permanent thing it, it can be smudged let me show you what I'm talking about um, if I just go like that it starts to smudge right even the ones that I used the water for will be smudgy so there's two ways I fix my um, pastels the first way is um, by layer. So if I'm still working on a project but I want to sort of seal down what I've already done and sort of make that layer semi-permanent so that I can build more layers on top of it, what you need is a workable fixative. For that I use this. This is Krylon workable fixative spray. It's not too expensive. You spray it on and it seals down that layer and it also lays down a bit of a texture or tooth so that the next layer has something to grip onto it. Krylon's not the only uh, company that makes a workable fixative, so um, this is the only one I've tried. I like it. I've heard good things about other companies' workable fixatives, so check them out, try them out, see which one works good for you. Um, I'll put a link to this in case you would like to try the Krylon workable fixative. It also works good for color pencils, um, for gel pens, lots of different products you can use this workable fixative for. Okay. Now, once you've got your entire project done, um, you're going to want to do a final sealant. And for that, you've got lots of options. <laughs> right now, this is a whole bunch that I've tried right here. Right now, my current favorite is this one right here. This is the Krylon UV Archival Varnish 1377 Satin. So I'll have both of these linked in the video description. This one um, is great for acrylics, watercolor, oil pastels, color pencil pencils, and oil. And it works pretty good for the pastels as well, although it doesn't um, list it specifically. It just says oil pastels, but I've used it on these pastels as well. And so you lay this on top. It helps it be more archival, seals it down so it's not as smudgy. Now, does it make it 100% smudge proof? No, for that you'll wanna put it behind glass um, if you're gonna frame it and put it up that way, okay? So that's usually what professional artists do. They'll use some sort of spray and then they'll put it behind glass or they don't spray it at all and put it behind glass because adding a spray on top of a dry product, any dry product will change the color and the look of it slightly. So I think most professional artists are always on the hunt for the perfect fixative spray that doesn't change the art that they've laid down, but it will fix it down and make it archival and do all the things they want it to without changing their art. So these are the two that I have been using a lot of for lots of my different arts. So I recommend those two. They're very stinky. Spray them outside. If you can let them sit and dry outside, then do so. Once you bring them inside, the odor does trail in with it, and it's very stinky, isn't it, Steve? Yes. <laughs> he does not like the smell of either one of these. I've tried the low odor. It's not low odor. Maybe less odor, but it's still very stinky. So all of this needs to be done outside. I've tried this one here, which is supposed to be a natural one, um, like a milk-based formula. Um, this one just spits for me and it has caused, uh, it's kind of ruined a couple of the pages I've done because instead of a nice even spray, it sort of spits product out. So I can't recommend this one. I've heard good things from other people though, but I can't recommend it. But um, that's another option if you're looking for something that's technically non-toxic, although I don't know if you can call any of this healthy or non-toxic. 
take that with a grain of salt, you guys. So what I'm gonna do is take these that I have created here, these swatch pages, I'm going to spray them with this outside and be back in a minute. I'm going to show you what they look like right now before I spray them and let's see how they change the before and after they're sprayed because that's always a good thing to see. How will the the pastels look after they've been sprayed, okay? So I'm gonna have Editing Steve do a before and after for us. Okay, so here are the swatches. Aren't they beautiful and quite different after the spray, especially on the black side? I could see it change like immediately. The minute that spray hit it, it went more translucent over here. So I'm excited to see the edited version on the video to see how much the light side changed. Because to my eye, as I was spraying it outside, I couldn't see the light side change, but I did see the dark. So I'm excited to see that final footage. Um, my thoughts so far, as I've been working with them, is that they're beautiful, vivid colors. They are a good, soft pastel. Um, you know, they're not as soft as some of mine. I have some half pastels that I use that are really nice and they're a little softer than this. And the reason why you want different softnesses and hardnesses in these chalk soft pastels is because then if you have a harder soft pastel, then you can get those crisp um, detail lines using those particular sticks. And then you can reach for your softer soft pastels for other effects that you're looking for. Now, why would you add water? Um, it worked really well adding the water. You can see on the sticks barely where I touched them with the water. I was kind of curious about that. And what happens when you add water is that the pastel and the water mix together and then when you paint it out onto the paper, it then washes down into the tooth and texture of the paper and you get a more complete coverage and less of the underlying paper will show up through. So that's a good application for that. What you do need to kind of keep in mind is that when you buy watercolor, watercolor paint has binders in it that help the pigment stick to your paper. So even though you have added water to these pastel sticks and you're using them like a watercolor, it's still not the same thing. There's no binders in there that's going to help that paint stick and hold on to the paper. Doesn't mean you can't use it like a watercolor, but it does mean that once they have dried, they're still um, just a chalk pastel sitting on top of the paper and a little bit down into the tooth and texture. So just keep that in mind. But one thing that the box said we could do was to shave or grind up some of the pastel and mix it into an acrylic product like this one right here, which is an acrylic medium. This is a matte medium here to create your own sort of acrylic paint to work with the product. And I'd like to try that. So um, I think I'll pick a few, maybe like three or four or five. I don't know. We'll see how into this I get. And we're going to shave them. I have this special tool here. This is actually a pastel sharpener that you use to sharpen a point onto your pastel so you can draw with them. Uh, I'm going to use this to shave off a little bit. We'll mix it in and create our own acrylic paint and I'll paint a few swatches down here onto the black and the white and we'll see how this works. So I'm going to just cue the music and let you watch me experiment and see how this application works using the pastels. Okay, for this swatching experiment, what I did was grate a very small amount of three different colors into three little bowls. And then into each of those bowls, I dripped about five drops of the acrylic matte medium by Liquitex. 
and then I used a brush to mix it up and do the swatch and I couldn't go I couldn't let that little bit of leftover paint go to waste so I grabbed my mixed media art journal and just freely laid that color down onto a page in my journal so that I could use it later as a background so that's what I did with that extra paint So as you saw, working with the acrylic matte medium and the shaving of the pastels worked really well. They melted into the matte medium and became a paint really easily. And as I'm rubbing on this, it is permanent. It's not smudging anymore. And smudging is a problem with our pastels. We've talked about it already, how to seal them down and keep them from smudging. So this, I think, would be a good thing to do maybe if you want a base layer or a, a particular part where you really don't want something to smudge and then you could come in with the same color, um, like this is the 228 here, um, just straight off the stick. This is it wet, and this is what it looks like as an acrylic paint. So you have three different ways to use it. Another way to use it, uh, pastels is by mixing it in with rubbing alcohol. There's a lot of things you can do with um, pastels. It's pretty fun. In fact, we have an entire series of workshops with the Bliss Partner Program over at Coloring Bliss teaching you different strokes and how to color and work with pastels. So I just want to kind of give you a taste of what pastels can do for us in coloring. In fact, I'm ready to get in and actually do some coloring now with the pastels. Um, the page I've picked to do today and that I'm going to make available as a limited time a free download for everyone is this adorable little bird right here. So follow the link in the video description if you'd like to download her and color her yourself. You could do it with pastels or any other coloring tool you have. I'm going to do her with pastels today and I had Steve print her on watercolor paper for me today and the reason I picked watercolor paper is because I wondered if if I was going to try doing some of these wet techniques or the acrylic techniques and the other reason is because watercolor paper tends to have a bit more tooth and grain and texture which um, pastels love they love texture so that's why I picked this paper and I hope it'll work well we'll find out as I'm working with it I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do but it's going to be a fun experiment another tool to have handy when you're working with uh, pastels is an eraser. They're erasable, which is fantastic. So if things get out of control, you can kind of fix those little problems with an eraser. So I'm going to find my eraser, clean up my swatches, and get my area ready, and let you watch me as I work on this little project. And kind of as I go through here, I will let you know what I'm doing and add some little tips and ideas for how to color with these pastels. Now one thing I did want to mention is that the black stick did break on me. This one right here is now in two pieces. And you know, pastel sticks, full sticks like this, it's pretty common for them to break. In fact, a lot of high-end pastel artists, the first thing they do is they go through their big sticks and they break them all in half. So it doesn't make me sad that it broke. The other thing that I am not a fan of is the way this tray works. Because it's a free-floating piece of foam, let me show you in the other view. Because this is a free floating piece of foam, sometimes when I reach in and grab a pastel stick, the whole piece of foam comes up and it dislodges all the little pastels and then it's almost impossible to get this tray back down without having to stop everything I'm doing and reorganize all of the sticks. So that's been a little bit frustrating. I do have a set of half, half sticks that came in a foam. Let me show it to you. 
because it was designed a little differently and I think a little better. So I wish Prismacolor had done this. Let me show you. So it's the same, it, actually it's a little bit nicer of a foam, a little thicker foam, but it's an actual full tray. So the bottom, if I were, I don't know if I can show you, let me show you on the other angle. Can you see that the bottom is the same foam? It's the same foam. So when you're picking up and using these little sticks, everything stays where they should. And each one has its own little coffin to sit in. And yeah, I prefer this kind of setup. So um, most likely these pastels here will end up getting set down into one of these trays that I have. Um, these trays go into a set of drawers where I take and organize and keep all of my pastels. So that's probably where the new pastels by Prismacolor will end up living eventually is in one of these drawers in my cupboard there over my shoulder. But for now, let's work on coloring a little bird, shall we? For the first part of the coloring, I just had a lot of fun blending the different pastel colors together using warm colors on our cute little bird. And boy, do these pastels just love to blend together. I picked two colors primarily for the feathers um, that I thought would work really well together. It was number 336 and number 286. And they do look so pretty blended together. And then I sort of topped it off with that really bright yellow. I think it's number 257. And oh, she's just so cheerful and happy. And then it was time to kind of clean up the illustrator lines. The pastel is very opaque, and so any dust that gets onto the illustrator lines makes them look a little messy. So using my kneaded eraser, I'm going to be cleaning up those lines. Once my little bird was pretty much done, I decided to move on to the background. So the first thing I did was tape her down to a piece of plastic. This is a inexpensive cutting board that I pick up at the dollar store. And I just used some low tack blue painter's tape to tape her down. This will give it a crisp edge, hopefully, along the outer border once I'm done. And I'm going to experiment with some of that watercolor um, effect that we tried with the swatching for the background and I don't know if we'll do any of the acrylic or not. Let's see what happens. The background was so much fun you guys. I did a dry mixing of three different blues and then I came on top of it with a watercolor type effect with those swirls and then I spritzed some colors with the wet pastel as well and oh boy really happy with that background can't wait to pull that tape but now that the background's done I kind of feel like my little bird needs a little extra love so I'm going to try to add a little bit more color onto the bird to sort of match the dynamic excitement that I was able to create in the background. I'm really liking how I'm using the watercolor effect to just sort of amp up a few of the details like in the shadows and adding some texture into the feathers of the bird. Now at the end here, I'm also using the white pastel to add some highlights. Not sure how it'll look as it dries. We'll see that together here in a minute. But let's see if I can use a white pastel in a watercolor type application to create white highlights on this little bird. Finally, I decided to use the watercolor trick with the black pastel to clean up just a few of the illustrator lines right around our little bird's eyes especially. Maybe the beak, maybe the feet as well. Just the primary details of the face and the bird so that um, they really pop when you first look at our bird. 
Okay, it is time to pull the tape and see how this turned out. And I have to say, this was a lot of fun. Working with pastels, it goes really fast. You can cover large areas. The blending is really fast. It's messy, of course. Pastels are always messy. Um, it's just the nature of that particular art product. But oh boy, you get a really good payoff. I still need to go outside and spray this. So I thought we could do a little before and after shot here with the editing magic to see how this turns out. Oh boy, did I lay that tape crooked, but that's okay. <laughs> And I think we got beautiful blends, vibrant colors, using a mix of different techniques. I just had so much fun. It'd be fun to combine the pastels with other mediums like color pencils and watercolor and markers. It'd just be lots of fun. All right, let's take that plastic away throw the tape away and I'm going to put this on let's see let's do the left side as the before slide it over here and I will go spray this with our final fixative let me zoom out just a little bit maybe nope that's as far as it'll go okay so I will now go spray it and then through the magic of editing right here in just a moment will appear the sprayed version. There it is, the final sprayed version of our Prismacolor new pastel piece of art. What do you think? Is it better sprayed or do you like the pre-sprayed version on the left? Which one do you like better? I'll let you look at it for a second here before I move it because there's a couple things I noticed happened when I sprayed it. Okay, I'm gonna bring it up to camera now and let you see what I see. So when I sprayed it, I think some of the things I erased, like here, some pink got out of the lines and I had erased it. I think it came back here and some yellow right here that I had erased that came back too, so that's interesting. The other thing is I didn't wash my hands good enough before handling the page, so that nice white crisp border now has some blue on it. Uh, that's all right, I'm not that picky. Um, but yeah, wash your hands before handling your piece of art. Just a little thumbs up. As far as the white highlights I created on the bird using the white pastel, it worked um, with varying degrees. Here on the beak, you can see that white highlight looks really good, but over here on the wing, it's a little more transparent. So sometimes it worked really good, sometimes not so much. But overall, I'm really happy. Look at all the details I got on her little breast there, on the wings, on the tail feathers. Look at the border and the background, so much fun. Really happy with how it turned out. So what do you think? Did I inspire you? Did I make you want to try pastels? Are you going to order the Prismacolor new pastels? What do you think, Steve? Oh, that's fun. Wow, that's vibrant. Yeah. I love it. She turned out pretty good. I'm pretty proud. Now, remember, you can come download and that was her. With just pastels? Just pastels. And just those pastels, nothing else? Nothing else. Wow. I'm impressed. Well, thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would like to download her and color her, remember she's a free download for a limited time. So follow the link in the video description. And also, don't forget... You still have time to enter for a chance to win this complete set of the Karen Dash Pablo pencils. Now you don't have much time, so make sure you follow the link in the video description because the giveaway ends June 8th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time and we'll be announcing the winner via email on June 9th. So watch for that email to see if you won this and remember part of this prize is also the companion book so that you can organize your beautiful new set of pencils. 
I'm so excited for one of you to win this. So comment below. Are you going to start coloring with pastels? Are you going to buy these? I'm so excited to see if you were inspired by this video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone.